What's up guys we're here to go over ufc vegas 73 song versus simon they finally finally added a uh, main event to the card <laughs> uh they took this fight off of um palovich versus blades which is this weekend and uh please like and subscribe um what i do is i go over give all my picks and then at the end of the uh, video i give out what bets i may have for the card um, at least my single bets uh, don't really give out the props and and stuff like that. But um, and I'm available on on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, uh, Rumble, all that stuff, Pandora. And uh, so yeah, coming off of uh, <clears throat> UFC Kansas City last weekend, uh, didn't go my way. Um, wasn't quite as bad as it looked as far as. My posted bets only one out of four hit, which wasn't good, but I did have some other stuff. I was able to get some of my money back. I had a play on Daniel Zellhuber that hit, and then I had a play on um, Chris Gutierrez that didn't hit. I had a play on Dustin Jacoby that didn't hit, and I had a play on Arnold Allen that didn't hit. Um, wasn't too mad about the Arnold Allen one because it was plus money. Uh, you know, it wasn't a super, super big play. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, I was super pissed after Dustin Jacoby uh, lost his fight. You know, I knew all I had left was my one underdog play on Arnold Allen, and I figured that probably wasn't going to go my way. So I, I added a play on uh, Metzen Barboza, you know, for some pretty good plus money. I was able to get some of my money back for that. And I also had a um, uh, Tanner Bozer, Ian Kutilava, under one and a half rounds that hit. <clears throat> and I had a uh, one of my... Uh, one prize picks bet that hit. I only had one last weekend. So, yeah, I lost a little bit of money, but it wasn't very much. I was able to kind of get some of it back when you add it all up together. But, uh, but yeah, man, let's uh, let's get into this card. First up, we got Stephanie Egger taking on Irina Alexiva. Stephanie Egger is 34 years old. She's 5'6 with a 68 inch reach. She is 8 and 3 and 3 and 2 in the UFC. And um, so Steph has a really good judo background. Uh, you know, she shines, you know, with her grappling and submissions. All of her wins in the UFC have been by finish, two subs and one finish uh, via ground and pound. She has fought in several weight classes flyweight, bantamweight, and her last fight was at featherweight. And she looked pretty good at featherweight. Um, Tapology has this fight back down at Bantamweight, so, uh, we'll see, we'll see how she, how she looks in this one. Uh, you know, she, she's very good at using her opponent's, you know, momentum to throw them over in the typical kind of judo fashion. Uh, she constantly goes for submissions if she's on top and, uh, she's always working towards a submission, you know, pretty much constantly. She's never just laying there and, uh, you know, her striking isn't the greatest, um, but that's why she has a very, you know, grappling heavy attack and, uh. I think this is a pretty winnable fight for her, man. So, um, she's going to be taking on Irina Alexiva. She is 32 years old, 5'8", with a 66-inch reach. Um, she is 4-1, and one, and this is going to be her UFC debut. Uh, so, I'm not really sure why Irina is getting this shot in the UFC. You know, she has very little experience, and she's only had one fight in Bellator, and that was like a year and a half ago. So, uh, you know... I was able to find that, you know, she's a three-time Sambo champion, apparently, and has a judo background, but but being honest, you know, what I saw in her fights was pretty low-level stuff, you know, from her and her opponents, so she was making a lot of mistakes in her stand-up. She was kind of following her opponents rather than cutting them off, you know, so she was basically being led into punches, and, uh, you know, I expect Edgar to uh, get the win here probably by submission, I'll say in the second round, and, uh, Next up, we are going to have... Oh, yeah, did I, I, I forgot to tell y'all, man. I, in addition to my bad week of bets, um, I uh, on Friday, I was hit by two vehicles in my car. I totaled my car out, busted me up, basically just destroyed my life. And uh, so I'm having to drain 
you know, my betting accounts, you know, I'm trying to get back in a vehicle and, yeah, uh, kind of trying to, to heal up and whatnot. So, I mean, I'll be out of work a little bit, but yeah, you know, just, uh, not a good time for me right now. So it was pretty tough for me to get, to get this done. And I didn't, wasn't able to get it out as quick as I normally do, but I was able to get it done. And, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, keeping the, uh, keeping the plays pretty minimal on this card. I think I got like one or two bets and, uh, most of my money is, is being taken off. So I'm basically kind of starting with a, starting with a clean sheet. I do still have my bets in for, um, Pavlovich versus blades, that card. So if those go well, I'll have more to work with. Otherwise I just have, you know, a uh, small, small bit on this card. Whereas I, uh, normally have quite a bit, you know, uh, a lot of bets and stuff, which I need to get away from that. So, uh, I had a, uh, I had a few, had a, a few, two or three weeks where I was, you know, hitting, hitting, you know, three or four bets on a card and stuff like that. And, you know, these past few, I've been kind of saving myself with the live betting and then I lost money, you know, this, this last weekend. So hopefully it goes better. But, uh, next up we got Haley Cohen taking on Jamie Lynn Horth. Haley Cohen is 31 years old. She is five, eight with a 69, Point three reach. She is seventy two, or seventy two, seven and two. <laughs> Wouldn't that be some shit if she was seventy two in the UFC? Uh, she's seven and two, and it's going to be her UFC de uh, debut. And uh, this is this is going to be the the third time in the past month that I've had to go over her fights, and the last two fights never happened. And uh, so, quite frankly, I'm fucking sick of it at this point. You know, she she's. She has she has quite a few finishes on her record. You know she'll have a height and reach advantage in this fight. Um, if this fight doesn't happen, I'll just pretend she doesn't exist from now on. Even if she does have a fight, um, you know she beat a pretty tough girl in her fight on the Contender Series. It was a close fight, but you know she's a really good athlete. You know she has like an Olympic. Um, I don't even know the right term, so I'm not going to say it. But she competed in the Olympics for like, I guess kind of like gymnastics type kind of stuff. But uh. But uh, yeah, she's very flexible and stuff like that, and um, I expect her to uh, to look pretty good in this fight if it even happens. Because I don't know, I know one of the fights that dropped off was her fault, and the other one I think was her opponent's. But uh, I'm definitely not researching any tape on her anytime soon again. So uh, she's gonna be taking on Jamie Lynn Horth. She is 33 years old. She's five seven with a 67 inch reach. She is five and zero. It's gonna be her UFC debut. And uh, she normally fights at flyweight, and uh, this one will be at 135 pounds. Um, not sure if they were just trying to find Cohen an opponent. You know, I mean, she's she's taking this on short notice or or what? Or why it's up? You know, at 135, but uh, seems to be pretty well rounded. Um, hasn't hasn't you know fought the best of competition yet, but uh, neither of them have. Uh, you know, this fight could probably go either way, but I, I'm gonna go with Cohen. Uh, you know, to get the the win by decision. I think she'll probably control Horth up against the cage quite a bit and just kind of win win that way or maybe get a takedown. Uh, but Hor Horth is pretty well-rounded. She's not a bad fighter. Um, she's just going to be at a really bad size disadvantage here, so I think she's going to be getting bullied around a bit. Next up, we got Julian Erosa taking on Fernando Padilla. Padilla? Is it Padilla or Padilla? Padilla. Let's go with that. Um... Julian Arosa is 33 years old. He is 6'1 with a 74 and a half inch reach. He is 28 and 10 and 6 and 6 in the UFC. Uh, you know, Julian's a very tough guy. I wasn't very high on him before because, you know, he's had he's had a few different runs in the UFC. You know, he he lost on the tough show. They gave him another shot, and he won a fight, then lost a fight, and then he was cut. And then he made his way back to the uh, contender series after a while and won that fight. Then he lost three in a row and was cut again. And then <laughs> Then won one fight on the uh, regional scene, came back, and uh, and he's gone five and two since since then. So he really impressed me with the uh, you know with uh, Charles Jordan and the uh, Hakeem Daudu wins. Uh, Hakeem was a was a guy with a good record, and everyone was high on him. And uh, you know he got whipped by Rosa, man. Barossa looked really good in that fight. I know um, uh, Hakeem had a really bad weight cut that time, and it could have contributed. But I ain't gonna take anything away from Rosa because. He really put a beating on him, and uh, you know, Rosa's a very tall guy for the division. Both these guys are, 
And, uh, you know, he's pretty fast. His spinning attacks aren't super telegraphed. Um, he has good uppercuts in the clinch, elbows as well. He pushes a good pace, and, and uh, you know, he can keep it up for three rounds. So his jiu-jitsu is, uh, is, is great. He's got a lot of submission wins on his record. Um, he can be pretty wild at times. You know, he'll rush in on guys, and, and that's how he gets caught by those snipers like, you know, Julio Arce or Alex Caceres. Um, you know, he is fighting some here, someone here that's, uh, you know, the height – you know, the same height as he is with a longer reach. So, you know, we're going to see how he deals with that. And he's going to be taking on Fernando uh, Padilla. He is 26 years old, 6'1", with a 76-inch reach. He is 14-4, and four, and this is going to be his UFC debut. So the first thing I notice about this kid is, uh, you know, almost all of his wins are by finish, both subs and knockouts. Um, the other thing is he hasn't fought in almost two years. So he's going to have an inch reach advantage, and a, or inch and a half inch reach advantage, sorry in this fight and uh you know he was the fury featherweight champ he has good boxing so one thing i can say is that you know in his last fight you know he didn't throw a single kick literally he just seemed pretty one-dimensional he has a 10th planet uh he is a 10th planet jiu-jitsu guy he has uh he's had the submission wins but i didn't see anything to make me believe that he's going to beat a rosa you know he's he's been out a while and he could show up looking better than ever but i can't take that risk so i'm going to be picking a rosa to win by submission round three Next up, we got Cody Durden taking on Charles Johnson. Cody Durden is 32 years old. He is 5'7 with a 67-inch reach. He is 14-4-1 and 3-2 and and in the UFC. So, <clears throat> Cody's an interesting guy. You know, I feel like he kind of low-key tries to like be like Colby Covington, you know, um, like trying to play the bad guy role sometimes, trying to get the attention and whatnot. He is a good wrestler. That's uh, his strongest skill. You know, his striking has looked better in his last few fights. Uh, a lot of quick finishes on his record. But his weaknesses are definitely submission awareness and defense. He's been submitted twice in the UFC. And uh, his fights are usually pretty exciting. One thing I've noticed is he usually, you know, slows down quite a bit in the third round, especially when he's pushing a really wrestling-heavy attack and constantly going for the takedowns. Uh, and he's going to be taking on Charles Johnson. He is 32 years old, 5'9", with a 70-inch reach. He's going to have a 3-inch reach advantage. He is 13-4 and 2-2 and two and two in the UFC. Uh, so Charles got robbed in his last fight. He should have won the Osborne fight. But the fight before that, the uh, Zalgas Zimagula fight, he uh, he robbed Zalgas in that fight. So he clearly, uh, Zalgas clearly won that fight, and the judges gave it to Johnson. Uh, so maybe a little bit of karma there. Um, I didn't think much of Johnson at first, but he's proved to be a really good fighter. Um, he has pretty good takedown defense. He has good power in his hands. His boxing is pretty slick, and, you know, he's a good size for, for the weight class. So, you know, I don't see uh, Durden being able to get the takedowns here. I believe Johnson will have the striking advantage in this spot. Uh, Cody might have a good first round, but I believe Johnson will take over and land the bigger shots. And I'm going to say Johnson wins by decision. Next up, we got Josh Quinlan taking on Ange Lusa. Sorry, I got to scroll up on my notes. They moved the fight around. Uh, Josh Quinlan is 30 years old. He is six foot tall with a 72 inch reach. He is six and zero and one and zero in the UFC. Uh, this guy has big power. All his wins are by finish. He throws a lot of leg kicks. Um, you know, he has his takedown defense can be better, but he gets up pretty quick. Um, he's well rounded. He had a long amateur career as well, so you know that six and zero record isn't you know all of his experience. Um, lots of quick knockouts on his record. And I'm really curious to see how he will look, you know, late in the fights. And, you know, because uh, he's I don't, I don't know if he's ever been to a third round. Uh, seems like a nice guy, though. You know, he stopped himself from breaking Jason Witt's face anymore after he knocked him out in that fight. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's pretty talented, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do against somebody that, that actually is a good, you know, really good UFC fighter and veteran. So uh, he's going to be taking on Angelusa. He is 29 years old. 5'10 with a 74 inch reach. He is 9 and 3 and 1 and 1 in the UFC. And, uh, you know, Anja's a very underrated fighter. I mean, you know, if you look at who he's been fighting, you know, his, his debut is against Monar Laziz, and that guy's a sniper, you know, very talented guy. I mean, he fought John Howard in XMMA. John Howard's not a bad fighter. Uh, he fought Jack Della Maddalena on the Contender Series and went to a decision with him. So that's, that's more than anybody else has been able to do in the UFC so far. And uh, his last fight was a win over A.J. Fletcher, and that was a crazy fight. 
and uh, he put a beating on Fletcher, and Fletcher put a beating on him. He came out with the decision, and uh, so he's very well rounded. Um, he has, he's going to have a two inch reach advantage here in this fight. Uh, Luce has definitely fought the tougher competition, and I, I don't think I'd be out of line to say Luce has a really good shot at winning this. And uh, I think he'll be able to get the takedowns because he's pretty quick with his shots. And uh, the past few cards, there have been, you know, these fights where my instincts are, you know, to, to pick a person, and then I talk myself out of it and, and go against them, and then they end up winning. And I'm going to listen to myself this time, although I'm kind of questioning it again. Uh, I'm going to pick Ange Lusa to win by decision. And when I originally made that decision, I assumed he was going to be an underdog. But, I, you know, I, I, after looking at the lines, he's actually a favorite. So that kind of makes me want to pick Josh Quinlan because, but I, I'm going to pick Angelusa to win. Uh, he's experienced, he's durable, and we'll see what happens. Uh, but I would not blame anybody for taking the dog shot on Josh Quinlan while you still can. He might wind up being a favorite soon, but uh, Angelusa was a minus 150 last time I checked. So you could get plus money on Quinlan if you want. Uh, and I wouldn't blame anybody for, for doing so, man. But I, I think my instincts were telling me Lusa is going to get the win, so... I'm going to be going with him. Next up, we got Martin Bidet taking on Jake Collier. And, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and let you know right now, man. Um, I would say I'm confident enough in it. I don't know if anybody else agrees, but my one, my one big bet for this card is on Martin Bidet. He is at minus 115 on Bovada right now. And, uh, and I think he destroys Jake Collier. And I'm, not, I'm surprised the line is that way. Unless he's like injured or something I don't know about. But uh, yeah, so three unit play on him. Martin Bidet, he's going to kill Jake Collier. I have no doubt in my mind. And uh, I would think most people would agree with me too. So uh, Collier just got beat by Chris Barnett. So I uh, I assume he's going to win. But uh, he is 31 years old, 6'4", with a 77-inch reach. He's 11-1 and and 2-0 and in the UFC. This is a real big, thick dude. You know, his legs are huge. Uh, I thought he lost the Bresky fight his last time out. He uh, he got out-volumed, but did come on late in the fight and land some pretty big shots. Um, he moves really well for a guy his size. He has pretty good boxing. Um, he puts out good volume for a heavyweight as well, and uh, he's got pretty good cardio, you know, for a big guy. And uh, all but two of his wins are by finish. Um, hasn't fought anybody I would consider, you know, very high level other than uh, Lorenzo, L Lorenzo Hood. Um, he will have a size advantage here, a pretty big one. I mean, this is a true heavyweight. Collier used to fight at middleweight. Um, should be an exciting fight while it lasts. He has good speed for a guy his size. Um, doesn't throw a ton of kicks, but I expect him to be even better in this fight as he gets deeper into his UFC career. And uh, he's taking on Jake Collier, 34 years old, 6'3", 78 and a half inch reach. He's going to have an inch and a half reach advantage. He's 13 and 8 and 5 and 7 in the UFC. Uh, like I said, he lost to Chris Barnett his last time out, and that should really be all I have to say. But, um, you know, he was winning that fight. Chris turned it around and, and beat him. Uh, Jake belongs at middleweight. You know, don't know if he'll ever get back there ever again. Uh, he has pretty good boxing, but his power hasn't came up to the uh, heavyweight division with him, in my opinion. Um, you know, he can get a submission if it goes to the ground, but I expect, you know, Bidet to be a better, uh, better fighter everywhere the fight goes here. And I'm going to say, uh, Martin Bidet wins by round two KO. Next up, we got Brian Kelleher taking on Journey Newsom. And Brian Kelleher is 36 years old, 5'6", with a 64-inch reach. He's 24 and 17 and 8 and 7 in the UFC. Uh, so Brian's a UFC veteran. He's been around a long time. Um, I was high on uh, I was high on him when he first came, you know, into the UFC back in the day, and uh, I can't fault him, you know, too much for losing his last two fights. You know, he lost to Mario Batista, who's destroying everybody right now, and Umar Nurmagomedov, a future champion. Um, so, you know, what I have noticed is is that you know the the wins that he is getting. Uh, are not the best level of competition, guys that are cut from the UFC. Um, so it's hard for me to gauge where he's at right now based on those wins. And uh, he does have a wrestling background. 
I would say that's one of his strong suits, but I wouldn't call it super high level wrestling like a Nurmagomedov or a Mario Batista. Um, he has pretty good submission game um, when he's on top, uh, but I wouldn't say from his back really. And everybody on Tapology is picking him to win this fight, which you know I, I find kind of surprising based on what we've seen lately. You know, um, but uh, he's gonna be taking on Journey Newsom. He is 34 years old, 5'5", five five with a 67 and a half inch reach. Uh, he's gonna have a what three and a half inch reach advantage here. He's 10 and four and one and three in the UFC. And you know, Journey's not a bad fighter. You know, he's looked much improved. Uh, you know, in the uh, in the Fernie Garcia fight, and he didn't look horrible in the Morozov fight. He got taken down a few times, didn't get totally destroyed. Um, I think Journey will have a striking advantage in this fight. Uh, Kelleher will uh, have to get the takedowns to win, but you know, I think Morozov would beat Kelleher any day of the week as well. And I think this fight could really go either way. Uh, so I'm going to be picking Newsom to get the win. I think he finally gets something going in the UFC here. And uh, I'm going to take him to win by decision. Um, maybe Kelleher has success with the takedowns early, but... Oops, dropped my water. Um, takedowns early, and uh, Journey takes over late in the fight. Um, you know, Journey has kind of like a kind of like a you know karate-type style of striking sometimes, so I think maybe he'll, uh, he'll stay to the outside and bust Kelleher up. Next up, we got Natan Levy taking on Pete Rodriguez. And Natan Levy is 31 years old. He's 5'9 with a 72-inch reach. He is 8-1 and 2-1 and and in the UFC. And uh, Levy has looked better each time we've seen him. He has a karate background. Um, he's a pretty good striker and a pretty good counterfighter. And his grappling has looked better as well. And... Uh, you know, he beat a real tough guy with a lot of power his last time out, man. And he has really nice kicks, especially his left high kick. There's no wind-up or anything. Uh, they're very nice. And uh, he showed good power in that fight. He dropped Valdez a few times. Um, I expect this fight to be a lot like the Valdez fight. You know, the the brawler getting outpointed by the more technical striker. Um, you know, and... Uh, you know, Pete... Pete Rodriguez is... 26 years old, 5'9", with a 73-inch reach. He is 5-1 and 1 and 1-1 one and 1 in the UFC. So if Pete destroyed Mike Jackson his last fight out, but Mike doesn't really belong in the UFC, and I don't say that often uh, about people or, or anybody else on the roster, really. Um, Pete has good power. He's very wild, but I think he jumped into the UFC just a little too fast. And they haven't done him any favors putting him against Jack Della Maddalena and Natan Levy and... You know, Pete will have a puncher's chance in this fight, but, you know, I mean, he's always live for a knockout with his power, but I think Levy will win this fight. Uh, probably round two KO. Maybe he catches him with one of those nice kicks that I was talking about. But I expect him to be the more technical striker here, and I don't think Pete will be able to get the takedowns on Levy. But I do think Levy will be able to get the takedowns if he wants them, so i got to go with Levy in this spot. Next up, we got Emily Ducote taking on Pollyanna Vienna. Emily Ducote is 29 years old. She's 5'2 with a 63-inch reach. She's 12-7 and 1-1 and one and one in the UFC. And uh, she showed to have good striking in her debut, beating up uh, you know, uh, uh, Jessica Pinne. And, uh, but she couldn't handle the Muay Thai of uh, my girl Angie Hill, so... I didn't I didn't notice it until I went back and watched those fights, but a Angie was in the corner of uh, Panay when Ducati beat her, so maybe she was getting some you know revenge for a friend or whatever. Um, Ducati is a, uh, a BJJ black belt, doesn't use it much here lately. She throws a lot of leg kicks, throws good combinations. Um, she will throw punches to the body often as well, which is something I like to see, and uh, she counters pretty well. I'm not totally sure on her grappling, but she's pretty solid. Like I like what I've seen out of her. Um, we just haven't been able to see her against any high level competition with her grappling yet. So maybe we'll get to see that in this fight. And, uh, she's going to be taking on Pollyanna Vienna. She is 30 years old, five, five with a 67 inch reach. She'll have a three inch reach advantage here. She is 13 and five and four and four in the UFC. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to cut this one pretty short. Vienna may have a grappling advantage here, but her wins haven't been over anybody that I find really impressive. Um, Viana will have a height and reach advantage, uh, like I said, and uh, that's nothing Dakota probably isn't used to, I'm sure. Uh, I'm going to pick Dakota to win by decision just because uh, 
I like women's underdogs. They tend to land, uh, hit a lot more than um, <laughs> than the favorites do. And I'm assuming Dakota's probably a uh, underdog. I don't, I didn't react, I don't remember, but I'm assuming. So that's I'm picking her because uh, this fight could go either way. And I'll I don't know if I said by decision, but by decision. Um, next up we got Cody Brundage taking on Rodolfo Vieira. Cody Brundage is 28 years old. He is six foot tall with a 72 inch reach. He is eight and three and two and two in the UFC. Uh, Cody's got a wrestling background. You know, that's where he is supposedly the best. Uh, but he got out wrestled by Nick Maximov, um, who turned out to be not as good as everyone thought. Um, and then in the Dolce fight, he was getting absolutely destroyed. And uh, then he got the guillotine choke. He did knock out Trayshawn Gore, which was impressive. But, you know, Gore had a really bad weight cut, which could have contributed to that. I picked uh, Cody Brunage to win that fight. And, uh, yeah, I was surprised he did. But uh, that's just because I didn't think much of Trayshawn Gore at the time. Um, you know, he got destroyed by uh, Olus Acek. And uh, I got to say, aside from maybe having power, Cody striking hasn't looked very good. His striking defense hasn't uh, been the best either. I mean, you can go back and watch the Dolce fight. He was getting pieced up. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how he looks coming into this fight and if he's made any changes. And he's going to be taking on Rodolfo Vieira. He is 33 years old. He is six foot tall with a 73 inch reach. He's eight and two and three and two in the UFC. So um, you know, obviously, if you know anything about Vieira, he's a you know a very good. Uh, BJJ black belt and his striking has come a long way in the Chris Curtis fight. You could tell he's really been working on his stand up, and uh, his cardio looked a lot better as well. Um, he has a really good arm triangle choke. Um, I don't think there's anywhere Cody is going to be better here in this fight. I think Vieira is going to be a, be able to get a late submission after Cody slows down in the third. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take Vera to win by a third round submission, maybe arm triangle choke. Next up, we got Waldo Cortez Acosta taking on Marcos Rogerio de Lima. And uh, Acosta is 31 years old, 6'4", with a 78-inch reach. He's 9-0 and and 2-0 and in the UFC. And, uh, you know, he's looked pretty good in his UFC run so far, but the wins have been over Jared Vandera and Chase Sherman, and those guys haven't have been having the best of runs as of late. So kind of hard to gauge his skills based on those fights. Um he has pretty good boxing, uh, pretty fast hands for a heavyweight, throws good combinations, um, has power. He's got a lot of finishes on the regional scene. He's undefeated in MMA, but he's been knocked out a few times in boxing matches. So seems to have pretty good cardio. He can keep up a good pace for three rounds, throws uh, throws out a lot of volume. And uh, the only bad thing I can say is, you know, he seems pretty one-dimensional. Um, he basically boxes the whole time, no kicks, no wrestling or ground game to speak of. And I'm curious to see how he's going to do it against a guy with a more well well-rounded game and a guy that's more experienced and better than you know anybody he's faced yet. So uh, he's going to be taking on Marcos Ruggiero de Lima. He is 37 years old, six one with a 75 inch reach. He is 28 and one and nine and six in the UFC. And you know this is a UFC veteran, been around a long time. Um, he has big power, training an American top team. He has the jiu-jitsu and the grappling advantage here, even though he doesn't use it very much. Um, he has good calf kicks, uh, and that could help him a lot in this spot. You know, he will come forward and match Waldo, you know, and and I think he, uh, you know, will will have the power advantage here. And I'm going to take DeLima to get the win. Uh, I think he'll probably be, you know, keep Waldo up against the cage and tire him out and eventually drop him and win by ground and pound. And, uh, you know, if Waldo gets the win against a... Uh, you know, an experienced UFC fighter, then I'll jump on the train with everybody else. But I just, I need to see, uh, you know, more out of him. Uh, you know, <laughs> I need to see him get a good win, in my opinion. So. And uh, next up, we got Carlo Borello taking on Mikhail Oyazacek. And uh, Carlo Borello is 30 years old. Uh, six foot one with a seventy-five inch reach. He is thirteen and one and three and zero oh in the UFC. And uh, this guy's real good, man. His strongest skill set is his wrestling. He has very good, very fast takedowns. Um, he's part of the Fighting Nerds team. Some tough people coming out of that camp right now. And uh, he does have a decent. He does have decent striking, fast kicks, but that usually is just to set up the takedowns. Uh, very good submissions. Um, you know, once he has a hold of his opponent, they usually can't get him off of them. 
And, uh, you know, the only thing I can, you know, say that's negative is that sometimes in the third round, after pushing a very grappling-heavy attack, he gets tired. But he usually still makes it work. And uh, a lot of people may think it's boring, you know, because he'll take the back and stay there the entire fight. But I really do appreciate the skill that he shows. And, uh, you know, his, he is, uh, you know, very explosive, and He's super talented, so he's fun to watch. And uh, he's going to be taking on Michael Ozechek. He is 28 years old, 6 foot tall with a 74-inch reach. Uh, Barolo will have a 1-inch uh, a reach advantage. And uh, Ozechek is 18 and 5, and he is... Six and three in the UFC, so I'm a big fan of this guy's man. Uh, he's very exciting to watch, and uh, he's very killer be killed in his fights, man. He spent most of his career at 205. He's been down at middleweight for his last two fights, and I think he looks looks a lot better at 185. Uh, he was always a small 205er, so he has very good striking with a lot of power. He has really good ground and pound from top position. Throws very hard leg kicks. Has a very good sprawl. And, uh, you know, he fights very well in the, in the clinch as well. And uh, he can get, you know, really wild at times, but he's also technically sound, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, he pushes a tough pace. He throws a lot of body shots, fast combinations. Um, I want Ole Zaychuk to win this fight. And uh, he's always live for a knockout. I don't think this is a good matchup for him, though. And uh, I'm going to be picking Barilla to get the win with his grappling, but I am putting a, a small play on Ole Zaychuk for as big a plus money as I can get. I, I, y'all, if y'all watch my show, you know I do that sometimes. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, if Ole Zaychek gets up like a plus 300, he's already close to a plus 300, that I'll be able to uh, drop a little money on him there. Just not a lot, just a little bit. Uh, just because he's always live for a knockout and he's a good underdog, you know, in the spot. Because he does actually have pretty good takedown defense. So we'll see. Because if, if the way Ole Zaychek can win this fight is if he pushes forward and he does not let... Barallo, uh push forward. You know uh, he needs to keep Barallo up against the cage. You know where he where he can't get a good a good takedown and uh, pressure him and and beat him up on the feet. And that's the only way he can win the fight. But I do think uh, you know Barallo will be able to get the uh, the takedowns. I think he'll probably win this fight. But it's not a bad little underdog shot. I mean I'll see what Olazechek by knockout is. You know if that's a even bigger plus money, maybe I'll take it. But. And now we got the uh, the main event, which I already went over in my video for last week. But, you know, some things have changed. Uh, so, y Yadong Son has taken on Ricky Simone in the new main event. Um, Yadong is 25 years old. He is 5'8 with a 67-inch reach. He is 19-7-1 and 8-2-1 and in the UFC. And uh, Song is an amazing striker. Um, very fast. Uh, throws good kicks. You know, he did lose his last fight to Corey Sanhagen, but there's no shame there. Sanhagen is one of the best in the world. And uh, I've been riding with Song for a while now. And uh, I was originally going to, uh, you know, probably pick Simon, but now I'm not so sure on it, you know, because um, this is now a five round fight. And you got to consider that, you know. Um, Yudong's been around in the UFC for a while and he's still only 25 years old. So he's got a lot of experience. He's constantly getting better. And, uh, Still kind of trying to decide on this fight, but he's going to be taking on Ricky Simone. He is uh, 30 years old. He's 5'6 with a 70 inch reach. He's going to have a 3 inch reach advantage. He is 20 and 3 and 8 and 2 in the UFC. And uh, Ricky is a very powerful uh, wrestler. You know, you know, he hasn't gone five rounds, though. He hasn't even been to a fourth round. And, uh, you know, so neither of these guys have been to a fifth round. Song went to a, the fourth round with Corey Sanhagen and lost due to a cut. Um, you know, Simon puts his, he pushes a, uh, a, a tough pace, you know, he'll stick, stick to you like glue until he gets the takedown. Um, you know, he doesn't give up. He has a really good arm triangle choke, great jujitsu all the way around. Um, this is a guy that beat Marab Dwashvili in his debut. So, you know, he's talented. Um, I just don't know if he's going to be able to push that pace for five rounds, man. I don't know how he's going to look in the fourth and fifth round, you know? So I, I kind of want to change my pick to song, man, and still debating on this right now. Because I do think Ricky will have some success early I mean, with the takedowns, but probably at least the first two rounds. But I think song could take over. Uh, and we have ha we have seen Ricky, you know, uh, knocked out before. Uriah Faber knocked him out, so. Um, man.
everybody else is going with well, it's 59% on Tapology going for Song, 41% for Simone. And I just can't decide, man. It's a tough pick. Being as you don't know what Ricky's going to look like in a five-round fight. And if he tries to pace himself, it could it could work against him because Song could come on strong in the, the beginning of the fight. And, and, yeah, Ricky may never get going, so I don't know. Um... I think I'm, uh, let me check the odds, man. I'm gonna check the odds real quick. See what's what. I'm assuming that, uh, Ricky will probably be a favorite on the books, but I don't remember. Oh, they don't even have it up on here yet. At least on that. Okay, well, I'm gonna stay with uh, I'm gonna stay with Ricky Simone. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh man, I kind of want to pick Song. Man, I've been rolling with him. He's been winning me money. Uh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Ricky Simone to get the win, man. I think he'll control him the first three rounds. Song might have a good round four and five, but uh, I don't know if he'll get the finish, but I'm going to take Ricky to get the win. And uh, so, yeah, man, that's, uh, that's all my picks. Um, sorry about, you know, I, I know this one probably seems pretty rushed, and I don't have as much to say as I normally do. Um, you know, with being in the car wreck and everything, I'm, you know, that I already had a messed up back, man. And that, that kind of messed it up even more. And I'm just super stressed out. And yeah, it's, uh, it's been kind of tough for me to even get this one done. So, uh, but yeah, the, as far as the bets go, man, just a, a big play on Martin Bidet and just a tiny little bit on Olaze check. The, the biggest plus money I can get on him is what I will take as an underdog. And, uh, yeah, man, if uh, hopefully everything works out, man, I can get back in a vehicle and get stuff going, and hopefully I don't lose all my money that I have left in the <laughs> in the next week, and week two weeks, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, if uh, if anybody ever feels uh, feels uh, like they want to donate a few bucks, help a brother out, man, my, my cash app and stuff's on my info on YouTube and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, man, so... That's all for me this week, guys, and uh, and I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I promise I'll do a, a little bit better breakdown on the next card, man. I know I kind of rushed through this one, so, uh, yeah, I've just been kind of kind of worn out, man. And, uh, all right, man, that's it for me, guys. Appreciate it, y'all. Y'all have a good one.